As someone who's a huge fan of the horror genre and has grown up with it all around me, I rarely ever get scared or creeped out from anything in the horror genre. However, there are a few exceptions to this, specifically stuff from my childhood. Out of all the horror things I watched growing up, the only thing to truly scare me was Doctor Who. Now, I know what the non-Doctor Who fans are going to say, but Lucas, you mean that silly sci-fi kid show about a funny British man with a bow tie and a fez and a sonic screwdriver, time travels, in a bright blue phone booth that's bigger on the inside? And to that, I would say, you mean the TV show with stone angels, statues that move when you can't see it and erase you from existence when they touch you? You mean the show with the tall bald aliens and black suits that make you forget them when you look away and electrocute you to death? You mean the episode about what if humans discovered water on Mars and the water turned you into a literal zombie? And not just the slow kind, the fast kind. That show? Because that's the show I'm talking about in this video. I mean, the list just goes on and on of how many just absolutely horrific creatures and concepts they had in Doctor Who. And to the Doctor Who fans watching, I do apologize in advance because yes, Matt Smith is my favorite Doctor. I think David Tennant would have been my favorite if I had been growing up when his run was airing on TV. I didn't start watching until Matt's first episode, which was in 2010. And something I like so much about Matt Smith's run on Doctor Who is that almost every episode, they tried harder and harder to scare the audience more than the last episode did. And man, did they succeed. The Weeping Angels, the Cybermen, the Silence, the Whispermen, the Snowmen, the Time Zombies, the Siren, the God Complex, those creepy wooden dolls, that one pink gooey shape-shifting monsters, and even the Daleks in one specific episode. This show was scarring all the children left and right back in the day, and I miss that. Unfortunately, just isn't scary as much anymore, being a lot older now, and I think I have a pitch to bring back that feeling for all of us hardcore fans of Doctor Who. I think HBO Max should make an R-rated anthology series similar to Goosebumps, and the whole show is dedicated to all the fucked up Doctor Who monsters just fucking up normal everyday people in one to two episodes per monster, or have an entire season about an individual monster and a group of characters. As we all know, Doctor Who is family friendly. Not everyone always lives, but the good guy always wins. There's always some sort of happy ending. Not in this show, there won't be. I want it to be a whole ass slasher movie television form. Every character is absolutely massacred by the end. Obviously, you don't want it to get repetitive, so you can do different things every time. Have someone barely escape for one story, have everyone die for another, have a group of people actually kill the monsters in another. You could also frequently hint towards the audience that all of these are actually connected, and for the finale of the show, the final season or the final few episodes, you could have every monster come together and every character still surviving come together and just have like an aliens versus predator type finale. I know that's PG-13, but I primarily mean to take the idea and story of the first one, the blood and gore of the second one, and then incorporate it into my idea. The finale of Matt Smith's first season is a two-parter where all the Doctor's iconic villains come together and deem the Doctor as the most dangerous person in the entire universe, and they lock him inside Pandora's box to be trapped in there for all eternity. I think you could take a lot of inspiration from that finale and make the finale for this theoretical TV show. What could the name be? I have no idea, but I'm open to suggestions in the comments. I want to break down and talk about some of my personal favorite horror monsters in Doctor Who in their iconic episodes so that my pitch will make a little bit more sense and some of you will be able to envision it how I do. The first one I want to talk about is The Angels Take Manhattan. There are a few iconic episodes about the Weeping Angels, but this is my personal favorite one. Funny enough, this episode focuses around a horror novel that was written in the future and it knows everything that's going to happen and it all comes true. The funny part is I just got done making a video about the video game Alan Wake where that is the entire plot. And that game came first, so maybe it was an inspiration or just a coincidence. Statues, the man said. Living statues that moved in the dark. Will you take the case, Mr. Garner? Sure. Why not? Because you don't believe me. For $25 a day plus expenses, I'll believe any damn thing you like. But you don't believe that statues can move. <laughs> and you're right, Mr. Garner. They can't. <laughs> of course they can't. 
when you're looking. The episode begins with a noir detective sent to investigate the Weeping Angels, unknowingly walking into a trap that will result in a very miserable death. The man is sent to a specific apartment building where he was told the angels live and he goes there and starts regretting it a little bit. But of course, he's still cocky and confident, but a little more cautious now. Walks up to a random floor, sees a room with his name on the side of the door. He walks in, sees an older version of himself, and the older version says that they are coming for him and they are going to send him back in time. The older version of the man dies. The detective starts freaking out, so he runs out of the room. He tries to escape to the roof and then realizes that the Statue of Liberty is towering behind him and was actually an angel itself the entire time. I always thought the Statue of Liberty being an angel was like overkill but really cool and genius at the same time. Now I'm not going to break down the rest of the episode, I'm just going to kind of skim over the important parts. Like I said before, the doctor has this book in the episode that knows everything that's going to happen. He rips out the last page in the book, claiming that he always rips out the last page because he hates endings, especially bad ones. Of course, foreshadowing the two main characters' deaths at the end of this episode, Amy and Rory, it gave the best companions in Doctor Who, Bite Me, Rose, and Donna fans. I really like the kind of main villain of this episode, this New York businessman who's obsessed with collecting non-human things, and he thinks he can keep an angel as a pet if he trades humans to the angels, but of course, he thought wrong because they murder him dead. There's also angels that take the form of baby statues, which is even more creepy and a good way to give the angels even more variety along with the Statue of Liberty. If you want to have a season about the angels in my theoretical TV show, I do think doing New York is the best option. You'll probably set it in the past again, although I think it should be set in the winter because there is a later episode of Doctor Who where the angels are secretly following the doctor on the snowy planet and they start hiding and rising out of the snow. So if you mix Angels Take Manhattan, mix that snowy vibe that gives the angels more places to hide and give the season that new doctor who disney budget i think it would visually just look so beautiful and mix that with it being more dark and gruesome i think you should keep the sending them back in time part of it but except dying of old age and them eating your time energy or whatever they get trapped in this little room filled with angels and the angels just gruesomely eat you alive blood and guts and everything for this you might have to retcon like them moving when you're looking at them just for the part when they get sent back in time you could use the excuse that now that you're trapped in their home they no longer have to move when you're not looking i'd also like to see new ways to defend yourself against an angel I'm not sure what specifically but i think that would make things a little more interesting the next episode i want to talk about is called the impossible astro not. The Doctor and the gang are sent to Washington, D.C. in 1969 to meet Richard Nixon and to work with the CIA to investigate an alien species known as the Silence. Yes, the Silence do look like the gentleman from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but as far as I know, there's no correlation and it's just a coincidence. The Silence have the ability to make it when you look away from them, you forget they existed. Their goal was to basically manipulate human history for their own gain and remain completely hidden. They hibernate together like bats on the ceiling and only emerge when they truly need to. They're used a few times throughout Doctor Who later on, once to stop the Doctor from saying his own name, and twice again even later to protect the Doctor from threats. They're not entirely evil, they're just kind of on their own team but they are intelligent the characters use a few methods to remember they exist like taking a picture of one and tallying on their arm how many they have seen so far so they won't forget for my theoretical TV show, you would need a logical reason for why the silence would come out of hiding to attack a group of people. Maybe this group of people have something they need and they don't know it. A dark forest at nighttime, maybe with bog as well, where the setting would be super cool for the silence. It would give them like a Slenderman vibe. And you could have their neck slash hibernation spot in some cave that the main characters stumble upon. You could totally make it inspired by aliens, where it's just all out chaos at the end. Characters being blowed up left and right. Characters trying to shoot the silence, but there's too many of them and, and then at the end have a lone survivor or final girl kind of like a slasher film you guys know that one scene in abigail where they shine a light on that girl that gets turned into a vampire and she explodes into a pile of blood and guts i want to see the silence do that to someone hi future lucas speaking i'm recording this afterwards because i remembered an episode that'd be perfect for my theoretical tv show call this an honorable mention if you want called asylum of the daleks basically about this abandoned planet that the daleks dump their mentally insane 
insane onto that they can't use for war and whatnot and they also dump their war prisoners on this planet to be killed by their mentally insane you could literally make this shit like predators the movie same concept in that movie the predators drop a bunch of people on one of their planets and basically hunt them down for sport i think it's similar to that the final episode and the most important one that i'm going to be talking about is called the god complex which fun fact was inspired by the shiny the doctor we're going to die here well they certainly didn't mention that in the brochure is joe there can i have a quick word oh it's still me doctor but i've seen the light i lived a blasphemous life but he has forgiven my inconstancy and soon he shall feast we've well, been here for two days what's he waiting for we weren't ready we were still raw but now you're what cooked if you like soon you will be too. Be patient. First, find your room. My room. There's a room here for everyone, Doctor. Even you. The basic premise is that a bunch of people are trapped in this hotel and all the hotel rooms are something horrific with each person having a room with their name on it. Inside your room with your name on it is all of your greatest fears. Once you succumb to your greatest fears, this minotaur looking monster relentlessly hunts you down and murders you. This concept alone is literally perfect for an adaptation of any kind. A movie, a show, even a video game. Imagine a Resident Evil game set in this episode of Doctor Who. Capcom, just send me that paycheck right now. You're welcome. No, but seriously, you take this template and you can combine it with any of my previous ideas. You can have the Weeping Angels emerge from one of the rooms, start wandering the place, killing people. You can have the Silence roaming around. You can have any monster ever featured in Doctor Who in this one concept alone. It's perfect. And if you were to make this episode the entire theoretical movie or TV show, you could just keep the same name the god complex or you could do all three ideas the first movie or season of the show is all about the weeping angels second one is the silence third one is the god complex that brings both of those together and any more monsters you could ever want at this point i think i might even write my own fan-made version of this idea just for fun and speaking of fun this video was actually pretty fun to make and come up with i want to thank everyone for watching and feel free to leave a comment about all your thoughts and opinions goodbye <laughs>